Australian Supercars is a motor racing series that takes place, unsurprisingly, in Australia. Recently, there has been more and more international buzz around the series, so I thought I might make a little video explaining the basics of supercars. So if you're new to the series and you're not sure where to start, then look no further, because this video is for you. For this video, I will be covering the technical aspects of the cars, the race and qualifying formats, and where you can watch it. I will be making a separate video about the teams and drivers as well as the point system. So if you want to know how the driver's championship or the team's championship works, or which teams and drivers are front runners or back markers, then stay tuned because that video is coming soon. Australian Supercars is a touring car series that uses heavily modified versions of existing road going cars. Currently the cars used are the Holden Commodore, the Ford Mustang and the Nissan Altima. Any manufacturer is allowed to enter nowadays, in fact only a few years ago we had Mercedes and Volvo included with these three other cars, however they have since dropped out. Supercars is a semi-spec series, with the vast majority of parts being spec parts either provided by supercars themselves or manufactured to strict guidelines by third party manufacturers. The chassis, cooling system, fuel, electronic systems, drivetrain, rear suspension, wheels, gearbox and brakes are all spec parts. In the past, engines had to be V8s, hence why the series was called and still often is called by fans, V8 supercars. Nowadays though, engines can be turbocharged or naturally aspirated and can have any arrangement or number of cylinders, though they must be able to produce between 460 to 485 kilowatts of power. Despite these rules though, all engines used currently are naturally aspirated 5 litre V8 engines. The reason for the heavy regulations on power but not on the actual engine specifications is to encourage manufacturers to provide their own engines. There is a spec version that supercars may provide for you if you cannot provide your own engine. Aero is unique to each model of car, but is designed in a way to ensure that no one model of car has an aerodynamic advantage. This way, each car still looks like its real-world counterpart, but doesn't gain any inherent benefit or downside. Gearboxes are sequential, with upshifts not requiring any kind of manual clutch. However, downshifts still require the use of a manual clutch pedal, hence heel and toe is still used by drivers in supercars. There are no driver's assist in supercars, no traction control or anything like that. This combined with the semi-spec nature of the series means that talent is one of the most important factors contributing to success of a driver in the series. And the cars weigh around 1,400 kilos. On a race weekend, there are three different types of sessions. Practice, qualifying and the race, which is pretty standard. Qualifying is just like a traditional qualifying session where all cars can be on track at once and whoever sets the fastest times by the end determines the grid order. However, at some races there is also a second type of qualifying session called a top 10 shootout. In this session, the top 10 drivers from qualifying will go out onto the track one at a time to set a new lap. They get one out lap out of the pits and then must make a flying lap immediately after this out lap. They only get one chance. This lap is then recorded as the final order of the top 10 drivers. So a driver who qualified in 10th still has a chance to qualify first if they put in a good shootout performance. And likewise, a driver who qualified first has a chance to drop all the way down to 10th if they have a poor lap or if they crash during their lap. For races, there are four different types. Super Sprint, International Super Sprint, Enduro Cup and Super Street. However, Three of them, Super Sprint, International Super Sprint, and Super Street, are all pretty much the same. The only real different one is the Enduro Cup. Supercars is a primarily two-race weekend format. During these weekends, with a few minor exceptions, there are two one-hour practice sessions on Friday, with a 15-minute qualifying session on Saturday for Saturday's 120km race. On Sunday, there is a 20-minute qualifying session, which determines the order of the grid for Sunday's 200km race. The Super Sprint is... Kind of like the bread and butter of the supercar series. It's what you'll be seeing most of the time. International super sprints are very similar to their national counterparts. At these events, there are three 30-minute practice sessions on Friday with a 10-minute qualifying session on both Saturday and Sunday to determine the grid for both 100km races. These events are shorter because they often support races for other bigger series like the F1. So really just see them as sort of a smaller variant of the Super Sprint. Super Street events take place at street circuits, as the name implies. Functionally, Super Street events are identical to Super Sprint. In fact, watching a Super Street weekend, you'd be forgiven for not noticing the difference at all. 
Generally for these, there are two 40-minute practice sessions on Friday and a 20-minute qualifying session on both Saturday and Sunday to determine who makes it into the top 10 shootout. This is the main difference between Super Sprint and Super Street. Super Street events always have a top 10 shootout. Adelaide and Newcastle both feature two 250km races, while Townsville has two 200km races instead. Finally, we have the only major different type of event, which is the Endurance Race. Endurance races are special races on the Supercars calendar, and they have some different rules to the other Super Sprint races, as well as something else to play for, which is the Endurance Cup, which is played on top of the Drivers' Championship. So points earned in the Endurance races go towards the Endurance Cup, and they also go towards the Greater Driver Championship. The Endurance Cup is awarded to the driver that scores the most overall points during the Endurance races. There are three Endurance races, and each is different. All endurance races feature more practice sessions than their super sprint counterparts and this is to allow the co-drivers which have been brought in from other series normally a chance to get used to the cars and tracks because obviously for an endurance race they're going to need to swap drivers. This is something that is not normally done on a supercars race, it's only done during endurance races and co-drivers must not be other full-time supercars drivers, they have to be from somewhere else. So, for instance, even though they might be teammates, Shane Van Gisbergen can't pair with Jamie Winkup because they are both full-time drivers for Red Bull Holden Racing Team. However, Jamie Winkup can pair with Craig Lowndes, who recently retired at the end of the 2018 season. He is no longer a full-time driver, so now we can pair with Winkup. The majority of co-drivers are either former full-time supercars drivers, drivers from the junior category Super 2, or international drivers who actively participate in other championships. They all feature a traditional qualifying session, with Gold Coast and Bathurst having a top 10 shootout to determine the final order, while Sandown has a set of qualifying races, a feature that is unique to Sandown on the calendar and something I will probably go over in a different video closer to the actual event because it is kinda confusing. Sandown and Bathurst have one race on Sunday, Sandown 500km and Bathurst 1000km. The Gold Coast is 600 kilometers total, split between two 300 kilometer races on both Saturday and Sunday. Honestly, I have no idea why Supercars chooses to make the endurance races so needlessly complicated, but there you go. All you need to really remember is that each one is different, and there is three. Sandown, Bathurst, and the Gold Coast. But what are they racing for? They're racing for points, of course. Whoever has the most at the end of the season wins the championship. There is also a separate teams championship too, although there isn't as much emphasis on this as there is in other motorsports. Rather than bore you with the details of the point system now, I will go over it in the next video, so if you want to know exactly how points are awarded, then make sure you subscribe so you can catch that one when it comes out. If you want to watch supercars in your country, you can by finding your country on this chart. Or you can use Superview, a service run by Supercars that lets you stream every practice, qualifying, and race session online. It costs 60 bucks for one year and must be renewed every year, which is super cheap for what you get. It's like five bucks a month, which is a lot cheaper than having to go through pay TV. Plus, Supercars gets all the money themselves, so none of that money going to greedy pay TV corporations. Although it is not available to Australians and New Zealanders, weirdly, due to contracting issues with Fox. There is also Super Archive, which lets you watch old races online for another 60 bucks a year. This is the 2019 calendar. I've also indicated if a race is a Super Sprint, Super Street, or Endurance race next to the event. Notice here that the majority of races are Super Sprint races, with a total of 7. 9 if you count International Super Sprint. This is what you will be seeing most weekends, and therefore is the one that you should be most familiar with. There's also a couple of Super Street rounds sprinkled throughout, and then Enduro Cup rounds are all together because drivers are also competing for the Enduro Cup, which is a separate trophy that can be won by the drivers only during the Endurance rounds. That's why the Endurance Cup races are all together in the calendar. If you don't want to watch every race this year, but you just want to try a few to see if you like it, then I can suggest a few for you. First up is Adelaide. The season opener is always a fantastic event, plus it being a street circuit means that they run a slightly longer race at 250 kilometers instead of the usual 200 kilometers on both Saturday and Sunday. It also gets a top 10 shootout, which will give you a good taste of just how that event works right on the first day of the calendar. 
It's a fantastic race. It's on the old Formula One track before it moved to Melbourne. And it always produces some fantastic close racing. Phillip Island is another classic track which always delivers good racing. It's the current home of the MotoGP in Australia, so you know it's going to be a quality track that always produces a good time. And then there's always Newcastle. So if you're still watching by the end, or if you're still curious at the end of the season, Newcastle is the finale. And it's only been on the calendar for two years, but so far both years it has produced some nail-biting races for the championship on both Saturday and Sunday. Some incredibly close racing, some controversial things have happened in both the events. It is one to always watch, on top of being a good track in a beautiful place. Finally, if you're only going to watch one race this year, only one, then you have to watch the Bathurst 1000, a world famous circuit and a world famous race. Every Bathurst race every year is always an incredible race filled with controversy, close racing, massive accidents, everything you could possibly want from a race spread out over the course of four to six hours, depending on what happens in the race. If you're only going to watch one race this year from supercars, make it Bathurst. I am going to do a separate video for the rundown of all the teams and drivers, as well as how the points work and how the co-driver system works. So feel free to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see some of that. But for now, that's everything you need to know about supercars in terms of how the cars are technically built and how the race formats are decided, as well as where you can watch it if you're an international viewer. Hope this video helped you out. Let me know if you're going to watch supercars this year, or if you're only going to watch a couple of races, let me know which ones down in the comments below. If this video helped you out or got you interested in supercars, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for the next couple of videos. I'll see you later.